Nowadays, everybody uses their phone without realizing how amazing the technology behind it is. Did you know that your phone, even though it's not broken, it is composed of very tiny moving parts? There are mechanical elements everywhere. These play a key role in today's cars, tablets, and airplanes. For example, they are used to measure the tilt of an airplane, the gestures in the tablet, or the air pressure around you to determine your geolocation. All this incredible technology revolves around a single ingredient, microscopic mechanical springs on a silicon chip. And the tools to make them have been developed by researchers from companies and academia. In the last couple of decades, mechanical components put safer cars on the roads, better gaming consoles and fitness trackers in the market. Today, we want to achieve the next transformational change in the way we use technology. Using light in addition to electricity to measure and control these tiny springs, the field of optomechanics is born. In this project, we combine quantum technologies, machine learning and extreme environments to realize new applications for micro-mechanical devices. Huge potential, but also challenges lay in the future of micromechanical sensors. A group of young physicists decided to tackle this challenge and work together on next generation devices with the support of the European Union. Light, when it reflects from a mirror, pushes it actually. It exerts a force on it. If the mirror is on the spring, it pushes the light back and interesting things happen. Optomechanics happen. It is the interplay between light and mechanical motion that creates correlations and this is very interesting from a scientific point of view, even useful sometimes. With mathematical models that describe the physical phenomenon happening in these devices, I can explore the possibilities of these devices. And if I can think of uh, an interesting idea, I work out the math, I can do simulations on big computers, and if I can convince experimentalists, or my chef, uh, that uh, the idea is feasible, then it goes to the lab for experimental study. And I call it a good idea. The creation of such tiny devices requires precise control and strict conditions. The cleanest air with controlled humidity, temperature and pressure are required for the developed processes to work. Some of the most sophisticated chemistry and state-of-the-art fabrication tools come together in such high-tech facilities, where researchers develop the technology of tomorrow. Once I've built a device and brought it back to my lab, before I show it to my boss, I need to ask myself a vital but very important question. Is it any good? Well, in most cases, um, to answer that, I'll resort to one of physicists' most well-known tools, the laser. Here, actually, the difficulty comes from manipulating the laser beam in just the right way. To do this, I often need to place very precisely tens, sometimes more, lenses, filters, and other optical components. But in principle, once I've done that, all I have left to do is put my sample in the right place and the laser gets all the information for me. Now, personally, the fun begins afterwards when I can put my device in more extreme condition and see what happens. For example, uh, if I take my sample and put it in a very, very low temperature refrigerator, first thing I see is actually it starts working better, but I also see that it starts acting a bit weird. I'm starting to see the effects of quantum mechanics. In order to leverage the full potential of our micromechanical devices in the quantum world, we have to cool them in the most powerful refrigerators to much lower temperatures, 100 times colder than outer space. In these extreme conditions, we can isolate and manipulate individual quantum particles in our optomechanical device to massively improve our quantum computers, enable a quantum internet, and realize quantum memory devices. 